2020 Two Fat Lardies Advent Calendar. Pull up a chair, maybe help yourself to a glass of mulled wine or eggnog, put your feet up and join me as we ask Richard, at this Christmas time, what are your hopes and fears for the future of the miniature wargaming hobby? I am actually full of hope for the future of historical wargaming, but I do think that there is a mix of hope and fear on the basis that the future could be bright and should be bright, but we have to be sure not to drop the ball through basic errors as we go forward towards that goal. Um, Historical wargaming is evolving. It's evolving to the point where the term historical wargaming itself could potentially be seen as a challenge. Let me describe what I mean by that. 30 years ago, my friends were all uh, historical gamers. Not all of my friends were historical gamers, but my friends who were gamers were all historical gamers. They pretty much gamed nothing other than historical periods, fighting, real wars. But now we're seeing wargaming is a much broader church. Historical gaming may just be one part of the portfolio of games that people play. And most of my friends now um, play a complete mix of games, and not just war games. Gaming, per se, is booming. Board games, card games, role-playing games. You go to, you see loads of gaming cafes when when I go around the country, uh, I do, and they are booming. Historical wargaming, we have to recognise, is a tiny fraction of that world of gaming. But we are essentially sharing the same pleasures and experiences in as much as we're, we're playing games. I think going forward we have two stark choices. Um, We can take a history purist line, batten down the hatches, try to isolate ourselves from lesser forms of gaming, as some would have it, or we can embrace change and encourage crossover with the broader gaming community. Now, where where I am concerned is that we do still have a rump of gamers, all too vociferous, unfortunately, that think there's only one way to play war games. Now, unsurprisingly, that always corresponds with the way that they do it. Now, I've, I've been writing articles for war games magazines for 30 years now. I've been a game designer for 20 years. So all of that time, I have attempted to be a positive force in, in historical war gaming that promotes what we do. Uh, This year, for the very first time, I was told by somebody that I was destroying the hobby. The games that I was promoting were not real war games. Real war games had hundreds, if not thousands, of figures. Well, I have to say that the truth is that real war games have never been that. I've got a copy of Don Featherstone's Looking Across Solo Wargaming on my shelves... We've always had naval games with just a few ships, aerial games with a few planes, skirmish games with a few figures. And yes, we have had games going up to many, many thousands of figures, but that isn't the only type of game in town. The truth is that if we say, no, you're not doing it right, we're shutting doors, we're we're being gatekeepers, we're excluding people who want to join in on the basis that they're not doing exactly what we're doing. If we want to limit the hobby only to people like us, I would question most strongly where such an approach would end up. Um, The hobby is changing. There are more female gamers. There are an increasing number of more gamers who are not white and male. What is important is not what colour they are or what sex they are or what their gender delineation or whatever the modern term is they are. The important thing is that they share our interests in military history from a gaming perspective. What greater reason can there be to welcome people into the hobby and to give them encouragement, not to tell them that they aren't welcome because they don't look like us or don't play games precisely as we do. So my great hobby for the hobby is that we grow. And the way we'll grow is by welcoming people. And those people are likely to come at us from other parts of gaming. And with historical wargaming, there are a lot of people out there who are gaming who may well be interested and open-minded in what we're doing. Um, In many respects, we, we can't look on this as though we 
uh, are the holy grail of all wargaming. We have to recognise the fact that it's a two-way street. People coming to us are going to be bringing so much with them that we can use. We we must be certain that we don't present ourselves as elitist or snobbish, but we've got to be open-minded and, and forward-looking. Um, if a newcomer to historical wargaming has a bad experience for the first time they come into contact with us, they won't be back, and what's more, they'll tell their friends not to go near us. And this is the recipe for a shrinking hobby that eventually is going to die out. If you look at gaming generally, game systems are becoming far more sophisticated, more interesting, more challenging to play on the basis that the greater the challenge, the more absorbing and more interesting a game will be. Now, this is an approach that historical wargaming could and should benefit from. So for me, that the future could and should be bright. It should really see historical gaming benefit from the explosion of interest in gaming generally. But achieving that end depends on us all playing our part to ensure that the public face of the hobby, particularly on the internet and social media, reflects positively on who we are and what we're doing. We need to be aware uh, when new gamers are coming on social media and we need to be doing all we can to help them take their first steps and make sure that they think they're you know, a good bunch. These are people who I want to be involved in. Advertisers need to ensure that they're not endorsing sites that present a distorted image of historical gaming as being just crammed with crusty old gamers arguing with each other and telling people that they have to do things in their way in order to be valid. Yes, we do need to be prepared to accept people who don't do things like us or aren't mirror images of us. But let's face it, these are people who share an interest with us and surely that is the greatest starting point for us wanting to have them involved in our hobby. Remember... Lard is for life and not just for Christmas. <laughs>